I'll just concur. Um, I think Rob said it well. You know, um, they know these buildings. They've already looked at this. Uh, I think the reason the cost came down from 45k to 9k is because they already did look at some of this, but it was for an educational use. You know, we're going to have this before us, the uh, new school systems you know, come before us. I don't know what we can do over at Lily B. I'm hearing mixed things. I want to know that because that's going to impact, that may impact our decision because it's going to be a total cost to this town whether we do that. Like Joe says, if we just tear that down, what's the cost? Well, that you got to kind of factor that into the school cost. So I think the Board of Education's made their decision, you know, to move forward with this. It's not approved and all that, but we need to do our little, our research so we know what we're dealing with here. Well, there is that piece. Do we even want to accept it from the Board of Ed or do we let them demolish it? And I believe they can get, um, you know, 43% back on the demolition of the old building as they move into a new one. Um, so there's, because they are getting that for the Flanders School, I believe, is part of the building package of the, the demolition of Flanders, inevitably, uh, would be part of the reimbursement, <coughs> the state reimbursement, maybe Lily B as well. So if we don't want it, we should know now. And if, if this town demolishes that building with that beautiful gymnasium, if you haven't been in it, it's probably the best gym in town. Mm -hmm. I think you're going to have some pretty teed off parents because gym mm -hmm. space is a huge premium. And we're basically going from three elementary schools to two, taking out a, one of the best gyms in town. That's a good point. And, Mark, just, just one last thing. I agree we have the experts in town and stuff like that and, and working for the town and residents that can help us do this ourselves. But that's not free either because we're going to have to have town staff work on, it, on that to support that. And that's not going to be free either. That is time that they could be doing something else. So. Either way, it's going to be a cost to this town, indirectly or, or directly. The value of these these folks, these hired guns, are, are, are the study of the space requirements. I mean, we have a lot of smart people in town. I get it. Yeah, this should go over here and this should go over here. But who's to say that these walls are movable uh, the, you know, uh, and that uh, police station can fit over here? And what about the gun safe? And what about the lockup? And what about the sally port? And what about... Um, all the, re the records room that would be required if you went into an independent police force, et cetera. So they have a handle on what the space needs might be in a typical police station, town hall uh, of a town our size, et cetera. That's why I'm in favor of this. Um, let's call a vote unless there's any, any other questions, comments. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Opposed. And there's no one left for abstentions. It's 999 on the motion. <coughs> oh, I have it as 100. I have it as 9. The motion has 999. You're reading it for that. Three, I'm two, reading it seven, for oh, this. 300, 500, 999. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll, okay. I read it. He, he read it, for, he read it okay? Yeah. Okay. I, I corrected it for 999. Okay. That's fine. If it's okay with the with the board, I'd like to move 2F forward, and then we're going to have a discussion on blight ordinance and health and safety committee. Uh, but oh, there's another motion to attach this. Oh. I apologize. Move to the first selectman. Okay. Where are we? The, Here. The move under motion. Oh, move to, to approve. Move to authorize the first selectman to enter into a contract with Jakunski Humes Architects LLC for the police department town hall relocation study. Move to approve a transfer in the amount of 9000 from CNRE fund 32, account 32-70-300-500-999 townwide project to an account to be established titled LBH best use study to pay for a study to determine the best uses and estimated costs for the existing Lily B. Haynes School should the Board of Education give the t town this building as part of the proposed new school project and forward to the Board of Finance for their approval? Second. Any comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Opposed. 4-2. Uh, again, I'm, if I can move uh, 2F forward then. So uh, Joe, Joe Smith's item. We have um, 2D. Yeah, yeah. If I could, I switch oh, the uh, agenda yes, around. Just I want to get uh, some of our town employees home, um, and then Bill, you can stay all night. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the building department has continued to experience a very high permanent inspection activity, and due to the unexpected breakdown 
of the building department's vehicle. The inspectors have been required to use their own personal vehicles for several weeks. An increased inspection activity has also led to the chief building official to be required to use his personal vehicle to perform inspections while other inspectors are also on the road. So the current budget, you know, we're going to see this a lot this year because we had a very, very lean budget, very efficient budget, but we were trying to find any way to cut back. So we depleted that budget. To, well, we reduced that budget to $500. Um, and that could have been okay if we had a vehicle in use and we're just, you know, um, doing minimal reimbursements, but now we're paying mileage, um, which can get costly. So we're, we're requesting an increase in line 247 in the amount of $1,500. Please. Move to... Uh Approve a budget transfer of fifteen hundred dollars from contingency to transportation allowance. Dash building <coughs> official. Move to approve a transfer in the amount of fifteen hundred dollars from account zero one dash zero one dash one two zero dash two hundred dash five hundred contingency to account zero one dash zero one dash one zero four dash one hundred dash two four six transportation allowance for building officials' use of personal vehicles for inspections and forward to the board of finance for approval. Second. I might add that, you know, this is one of those departments that, you know, when they're busy, it means we're also taking in building permit revenue. Um, they come in in different years, so most of those building permits, all, those, all the building you see in town, whether it's the apartments, whether it's downtown, uh, lots of construction program pro, uh, applications and, 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 and things in the ground, uh, that stuff already came in, but Joe and his crew are, are out there inspecting uh, daily. So uh, and of course there's the solar program and it's just the typical decks and the and, and additions and knockdown rebuilds and all the other things that happen in town um, on an annual basis. So uh, that's going on. We have a motion. Any comments? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Joe, thanks for coming out and, and lending so much information. Uh, appreciate you coming out to support. Thanks for coming there could have been yeah. some questions on that. Appreciate it. We'll go back to the uh, order that we were in, which is 2D discussion of blight ordinance. I um, I have on my desk about eight different properties in town where citizens have called in uh, a concern of a property, whether it's abandoned or it's being lived in, but uncapped or uh, truly abandoned with no electricity and boarded up. And um, uh, we don't have much authority to go in and do much on that. I've actually inspected these properties, um, so I know they're not just uh, naggy neighbors, but indeed uh, a real concern. Um, so I've, I've charged Mark Salerno, who's fresh off the Zoning <laughs> Commission, to uh, kind of look into this a little bit, and um, he's working with Bill Mulholland, and I think he'll give us a, a short, succinct, succinct report tonight, and we're going to go sure. forward with some work. So I met with uh, Bill this morning uh, to, to discuss this. Um, as you know, right now, zoning is uh, the avenue uh, for this if there's broken down uh, vehicles and stuff like that. But it's a very costly and takes a lot of time. Uh, it has to go through court systems. And there's not a lot of teeth uh, that the zoning official can use to enforce these things. Um, so most towns in the state have uh, blight ordinances. Uh, Bill and I took a brief look at some of them, and, and basically the reasons for the blight ordinances that are uh, for most of the towns are for promoting public health, safety, and welfare, and preserving uh, property values. Those are the two uh, highlights. Uh, most of the towns, Montville has one, I believe. Uh, all the local towns have a New London just updated their uh, blight ordinance. Uh, we're actually in the minority with this. Um, you know, looking at it, we'll... The plan would be to go through and look at different different towns, what you're doing, but it's got to be designed for our town. We have different needs. We're different than other towns. Uh, so it'll have to be um, have to be uh, done in, in, for this town. Um, we also have some active farms in town, and if you look at some of them, uh, some of the regulations that there are uh, exemptions for active farms because there are some old barns there that would be considered blight. So we have to be careful on how we word it, and we, and we may want to look at exemptions for certain historic properties or, or, uh, or active farms. Um, but, you know, one thing uh, we want to look at is um, we're not intending to do this. This is the intent for this would not be to harass our constituents. Um, nobody likes an overzealous government, 
you know, this is just we have some properties in town that are blight that are that haven't been lived in for a while that have big problems. It does devalue the property. I've seen some of these. Um, if uh, I were going to buy a house, that would that would concern me. It definitely it definitely affects uh, property values. So this would be designed to be a tool of the last resort um, to enable that the buildings are in harmony with the uh, existing neighborhoods for extremely derelict properties uh, is what we're looking at. It um, it will all have due it has to have due process if you look at the underlying uh, statutes. Um, so there has to be some sort of uh, review type board. Um, Generally, uh, these these uh, ordinances assign someone, either the zoning official, uh, it cannot be like a police officer or anything like that. It has to be a zoning official, a building official that will do the enforcement. There's usually fines uh, on the order of $100 per day, um, and there is due process, so you would be given a warrant and stuff like that. That's how, when you look at most of the other towns, that's how it works. Um, Bill, did you want to add anything that I missed from what we talked about this morning? <coughs> And that it's so late. Oh, wait, it's not 1 o'clock. It's not like a zoning meeting. Um, <laughs> Nor is it going to be. <laughs> yeah. uh, Bill Mulholland, very briefly, um, Mark has very succinctly described what, it, what essentially it entails. We're looking at the process. I have talked to the town attorney. I have uh, discussed it at, at some length with him. We're going to try to do some drafts and put it together and try to detail this for our community and get something to you in a draft form that you can look at and you can kick around. There is a process that uh, most of the communities in the state are uh, have something in the toolbox like this and we probably it's probably time for us to put something in our toolbox to be used as necessary. Um, in the zoning regulations we really label things as a junkyard and it's in uh, as Mark had pointed out I have to take it to court. I've got to prove my case. It takes a lot of time and effort. Uh, with this particular system, it appears that it could be a little quicker. Different communities you've used different systems. Some have, you, you may need an appeals board. There may be a process. Um, all that can be put together, but that's what we're starting to look at. It's really essentially day two of, of examining this issue. So I think at some point Mark will report back to you and you can make some decisions based on the research and, and move that forward if you choose to. Is there some reason historically why we have not had a blight ordinance? It's come up over the years from time to time, and, and, and some of the powers to be have thought that the town wasn't really essentially ready for that, if you will. Um, we've been able to get by based on what we had in zoning. Um, I think some of the perceptions of some folks who are in the community now are they're from communities that have had these in the past that they have found useful. I think when we all live in our neighborhoods, we all kind of look around our neighborhood and want to see it in a certain condition. And if there is a blighted property, I don't have those tools. And so this would be just one more tool in the toolbox. Um, there can be the risk, based on my research, that some folks would try to use it to harass their neighbor. Well, that's certainly part of the process when you investigate these things. The enforcement can be done by a variety of different town staff. It does not necessarily have to be zoning. Uh, many towns do it differently. That's something we'll discuss in the future. And the process as we start to work through this, I'll be working with Tracy from Ed O'Connell's office. She's been assigned to look at this. So uh, we'll move that forward and, and get back Thank to you, you as appropriate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And again, we're not trying to become an elitist society. And we're looking for, I think Mark said it best, the most extreme cases. and. Uh, probably all the cases on my desk, the eight or nine on my desk, are extreme abandoned houses for years with no keeping of the property, broken windows, kids in the house partying, um, an open, an open um, swimming pool where you know now it's a pond, but now alligators. the alligators, yeah, alligators and snakes and Piranhas. lots of frogs actually, yeah. lots and lots of frogs. So, and you know. Um, um, uh, mosquitoes and all that health stuff, hazard. you know, health hazards. And, um, and we can use those tools as well, the health hazard thing, but that becomes tricky as well. So thank you, Mark. Thank you, Bill. And thank you, Tracy, for your upcoming work on that. Much appreciated. Um, uh, last on our agenda, since we skipped around, 2E is the appointment of health and safety committee members. I'll move to appoint the filing to the health and safety committee. Karen Galbo, Victor Benny. Anna Hartung, Julie Wilson, Ed Ball, Joe Bagraw, Chris Taylor, Mike McDowell, Ron Bent, 
and Jeffrey Weiss, and to serve through September 15th of 2016. Second. Any comments? Are all of these people town residents? They're all employees. Are they all town residents? I don't know. You have to be a town resident to serve on a committee. Yeah, Karen is in though. Who? No, Karen was. Karen is. Karen was. Yeah, Karen is. Karen was. Yeah. Anna's in Waterford, right? Hartung's Hartung's in Waterford. Yeah. Okay. And Victor, I'm not sure where he lives. Well, that don't work. There's a big river there. They have to be in. Jeffrey's town. in Salem. Is what you're saying? I'll pull. We can uh, pull this motion. All right. I'll table the motion. We'll table the motion and we'll uh, we'll look into that. I think we've had people from out of town on this before. Some of these people are repeats, okay. uh, but we should go back and take a look at okay. that. Okay. To make it official, I'll move to table it. Okay. I'll table my second. Unfinished business. There are none. No communications. So we'll go to ex officio reports. If we can make them uh, as brief as possible. I have no report. No, no report. Uh, just real quick, uh, Parks and Rec had no meeting, but they did do a drug and alcohol survey that will be coming to the board very soon. And if you go online to East Lyme Parks and Rec, there's this online survey for adults to take. If you participate in it, take the survey. Uh, it does make us eligible to possibly get a grant. So please go online and take it. Gary mentioned about the uh, trucker trick or trunk on the 28th. That's a really fun time. People, a couple of organizations, the police department do a little bit of a, uh, a haunted uh, trailer, for lack of a better word. It's fun. Kids have a good time. They play Charlie Brown's. Uh, it's the Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown. It's a good fun, good time. Um, one other thing, too, I just noticed this isn't really an ex officio, but uh, on the State Veterans Day Parade up in Hartford this year, Joe Perkins, who is a longtime resident of town, is one of the Grand Marshals. Joe is a retired Master Sergeant of the State Police, retired Brigadier General in the Connecticut National Guard. I think it's an honor to obviously him and the town and seems to thank him for his service to state and country. And speaking of which, I will not be here at the next meeting because I will be in Oklahoma attending my son's graduation from basic training. So good luck it. to your son. Thank you. Cool. Good luck to you. That'll be a nice reunion. Yes, you'll we'll be looking forward to it. Very much. Uh, Mrs. Hardy. Planning Commission met in a special session to discuss the addition of the uh, extra additional apartments at Gateway. They spent a considerable of amount of time discussing each aspect and whether it was consistent with the POCD, that would be the plan of development, and unanimously ruled that it was not. So it was somewhat disappointing to sit at the Zoning Commission meeting and hear the discussion and hear very little discussion of the Planning Commission's concerns. Um, unfortunately, Mr. Frank Belantic has resigned from the Planning Commission and unfortunate in that he was a very stalwart member of the mm -hmm. Commission, a great contributor, and his uh, absence will be missed. They have 30 days to present to fill the vacancy, but as they have alternates, I would doubt that they would do that prior to the election. That's my report. Was that, was that term up? Was yes. so, it went, okay. I don't have anything to report. My uh, inland wetlands was canceled. Okay. Um, I have a few things to um, talk about, and then we'll go to public delegation, and then will respond to a few of the items. Um, the Cheney bathrooms, you know, uh, we did get a, um, a very exciting news, um, and that is we got a $500,000 grant, steep grant, to include uh, bathrooms down at Cheney Park, something that's very much needed. We have one end of our, what will be a 1.1 mile boardwalk. It will be the very biggest beach in, in our control in town, and um, now we'll have a place to go. So uh, that is um, on the drawing board. I believe that was discussed in Water and Sewer years ago. This was applied, I think, prior to my time here. I've been um, obviously lobbying for this, uh, for the passage of this and the approval of the steep grant since I've uh, been in the front office. But um, um, we'll we'll have more on that. Since I think we met last, or maybe we did talk about this last time, it's the the. Uh, 
Saunders Point Sewers. We have a scope of work that's been approved. Uh, the, the study has been approved down at Saunders Point. Another good, exciting thing. We've been waiting years and years just for this approval to go forward. We know, um, you know, um, Pine Grove was done how many years ago, darling? Like eight? Ten. Uh, Ten? Uh, yeah, well, really should have been done at the same time. Now. And um, I should ask you, Rob. I'm sorry. Apologize. It's okay. But she lives there, you know. She flushes um, down there. So, she's, <laughs> she knows. so, so listen, Saunders Point is in desperate need. The roads are also in desperate need. Um, and we have to keep them passable. It's our obligation. Uh, but we certainly don't want to spend town money, good money, um, chewing up, pay, repaving the roads, and then chewing them up again in two and a half or three years. Or five, um, the flagpole in our town green uh, was. Um, I'm not sure that we talked about this last time. We have a big double wide tra uh, telephone pole. I was told that was put up in 1931. I thought it was 41, but maybe 41. It, it would 40 make sense to be after the hurricane, right? It was yeah. 41 after the. Yeah, hurricane. Someone told me it was 31. And I went. Mm, that doesn't sound right. I've seen those pictures of. Um, the hurricane and it, that doesn't seem right so anyway it's been up there that long they, it, it went up it's, let's say it goes up 50, 60 feet then there's these metal brackets to hold a, um, an aluminum pole in place and that's where the rigging is and that would go up another 30 20, feet 20 or 30 whatever it is well the the brackets let go or failed and, and disintegrated if you will uh, got uh, corroded so we had a flagpole and a top and the wind that just came through this weekend, which was our, really our first stormy, windy weekend, and it wasn't hurricane by any stretch of the imagination, um, it probably would have brought the thing down. So we caught it. Um, Dick Morris, kudos to Dick and uh, his engineering skills and uh, his emergency management skills. We got bucket trucks up there. We got fire guys up there. We uh, brought the aluminum pole down. And sure enough, I mean, the, the pieces were just crumbling in our hands. It, it would have just taken one gust to bring it down on someone's head or someone's car. Or, um, would have been a bad scene. Also, kudos to Dick. Um, we had this abandoned boat situation on, uh, on Crescent, um, Beach. Crescent Beach. Um, the guy is, um, you know, I hope he, I hope he gets the help he needs. Um, he abandoned his boat. He said he was coming back and never came back. He's had some trouble all summer um, in other areas. Um, again, we, we, we got the boat out of there for, for um, a minimal cost, a, a couple thousand dollars, which we'll be, uh, we'll be sending the bill to him and putting a lien on his property. We are in the process of doing that now. Um, and um, that's really all I have for ex officio. Obviously, very busy with town meetings. We're after Labor Day and before the holidays. This is the busiest time of the year with the exception of budget season. So um, every night there's, there's something going on, um, and um, tonight's no different. So let's uh, go back to, I think it's um, public comment. Public comment. Uh, well, flagpole prognosis. Flagpole prognosis. What we're going to have to do is just discover how much it's going to be to replace that. We're, right now, we're just, we're um, we have some tests out whether that pole needs to be totally replaced or if we can cut it down and then put a, a, a higher aluminum pole on that. So we're still kind of testing that out. Um, there are some people, you know, determining the uh, integrity of the wood, um, and, and so we will uh, we'll know more in a bit. Thank you for asking that. So, um, public discussion? Would anyone else like to speak? Yes, Gary. Real quickly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <coughs> Gary Lukowski, 12 Methodist Street. Um, not representing the Smith Harris House at this point. Okay. I, I'm very happy to see that the town is actually thinking about LED street lighting. Yeah. Uh, it's a person that sells LED lighting to the state of Connecticut and other. Places I've seen it go in. I've seen the return on investments that these things are going. One thing this town has going for it is they are slowly replacing all the exterior lights on the firehouses and the these buildings here. Uh, Ron Bentz is doing an excellent job and is within his budget to get these things changed. We also he called me and asked me about changing the light bulbs inside these fixtures here. We found a deal through Eversource where we could get the LED replacement lamps instead of $21 a piece for $3 a piece. 
So he went through the buildings replacing them. So you are saving, oh, approximately 45 watts per light fixture out here per hour, kilowatt hours. So you, uh, wow. I think you should send a thanks off to Ron because he's doing his job very well. Yes, he is. And great job. Thank you for bringing Yes, he does attention. everything he yes. does. Great information. Other comments? Yes, Ed. <clears throat> 22 North Pine, Saunders Point. Uh, regarding the LED uh, light fixture upgrade, uh, just would like to point out a couple things that you people should keep in mind or consider or whenever the, uh, whoever's handling the study. Number one, um, I got the impression that uh, the town would be considered considering buying the fixtures that we presently are renting from Eversource. Um, and then I also got the impression from the report that the town would be replacing the entire fixture or just the bulb. I wasn't sure about what they were talking about there. Just the bulb. I think I heard bulb too, but I'm not be good. No, the entire fixture. We're buying the fixture and the bulb. So you're talking about the arm? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I thought that's what he was saying. And my question is, is that really necessary? I would think that uh, it would make sense to buy the fixture from Eversource, but more than likely, if not today, in the near future, there's probably an LED bulb that will fit that fixture or be retro into that fixture without having to replace the entire arm. So I would, I would like you people to, you know, push back to this company and maybe look at some other companies that might be available to help the town <coughs> in uh, reducing their electric uh, expenses. Because uh, I know for a fact that um, where LED bulbs were hard to come by a few years ago, now you can get an LED bulb that fits just about every fixture in, in any shape and form. So if they don't have an LED bulb that fits those fixtures right now. I would think that in the near future, there would be an LED bulb that would fit that fixture. And yes, I think it's a good idea to consider buying those from Eversource as opposed to renting them on a continual basis. You know, sort of like the old telephone. People used to rent the phones and you bought them, you know, over and over again. So yeah. uh, I think that's a good idea. The other thing, I would consider is if you are going to buy them, maybe you buy a third at a time or you know, 25% this year, 25% next year, as opposed to in 20 years having to replace all, uh, you know, all the bulbs in town. You don't want to be in a situation where you know, come 20 years you're going to have to upgrade all the bulbs. So mm -hmm. you want to phase it in, I think, as opposed to just a, you know, all out upgrade. So that would just be some considerations uh, that I think you should look at okay. uh, in this process. Thanks, Ed. Thank you. And is, well, that, is you going to talk some more about other things? Okay. Cool. Everything goes dark. The same day everything goes dark. Anything, uh, <laughs> any other public comment first? I, I have a selectman's response. If, if no one else does, I have a few comments on some of the public comments. Uh, first, I have a question uh, to you, Bill. Um, the approval of the Gateway Apartments way back when um, yeah. Apartments or condos? I thought there. I thought there were apartments. Or does or.